Civilizations don't collapse because people stop working. They collapse because people stop thinking. And generative AI is already pushing us in that direction. Imagine classrooms full of students turning in flawless essays, yet when tested, they can't explain a single idea. One study found exactly that. AI users scored lower on memory and critical thinking than their peers. That's just one of six dangers I'll cover in this video, because this isn't only about your phone or your job, it's about the future architecture of the human mind and civilization itself. The first danger is handing over our thinking to the machines. At first, it feels like magic. You ask a question and out comes a polished answer. But every time we let AI do the hard work, we're skipping the struggle that actually builds intelligence. Human progress has always depended on that struggle. Wrestling with ideas, testing them, reflecting on mistakes. That's how civilizations produce philosophers, scientists, innovators, and strange futurists like me. If we surrender that process, what's left? A population that looks productive on the surface, but hollow underneath. And the research is already sounding alarms. For example, a 2024 study by Zhang and Mullaney found that students who relied heavily on chat GPT scored significantly lower on critical thinking tasks than their peers. In short, the more they offloaded to AI, the less capable they became of deep reasoning. The risk is stark. We may gain endless fluency of output, but lose the very capacity to judge, to question, to imagine. And when civilizations stop thinking for themselves, they may not just decline quietly, they may collapse. The second danger is the illusion of competence. Generative AI gives us answers that sound fluent, confident, even brilliant. And when we use those answers, we often believe the mastery is ours. But productivity isn't the same as understanding. History shows that civilizations thrive on accurate self-knowledge, knowing not just what we can do, but what we cannot. When people confuse borrowed cognitive competence with true comprehension, the likely result is a fragile foundation for society, like building palaces on sand. A 2025 study by de Souza and colleagues put this to the test. The students who learned with ChatGPT thought they were ready for the exam. They predicted high scores. But when the AI was taken away, they performed far worse than the control group who had studied on their own. The AI had given them a false sense of mastery, masking the gaps in their knowledge. If we normalize this illusion across whole populations, we risk a future where citizens feel informed but can't think critically, where leaders sound authoritative but can't reason deeply, and when civilizations lose the capacity to separate true knowledge from empty confidence, collapse becomes a distinctive possibility. The third danger is homogenization of ideas. Generative AI can make our work look smoother, clearer, more polished. But beneath the polish, something subtle is happening. Originality is flattening out. Civilizations, like species in the context of natural selection, don't thrive on sameness. They thrive on the clash of different ideas, unexpected perspectives, and creative diversity. If our collective imagination begins to converge on the same AI-generated patterns, we risk entering an echo chamber on a planetary scale. The studies are already documenting the effect. Morales and Van Dijk, I hope I'm saying that correctly, ran creative writing experiments and found that while AI helped individuals produce cleaner stories, it also made the stories more alike. Diversity of ideas fell. Similarly, May and colleagues showed that students writing with ChatGPT produced fluent, well-structured work, but originality suffered. What can we make of this? When originality collapses, cultures stagnate. If the world's creative output becomes one endless remix of the same AI-trained tropes, then innovation slows, and the capacity for paradigm-shifting ideas, the kind that move civilizations forward, may disappear. The fourth danger is creative demotivation. Paradoxically, the more we let AI help us create, the less meaningful creation can feel. Imagine an artist who asks a machine for inspiration and then looks at the finished product, not with pride, but with emptiness. Human beings don't just value outcomes. We value the struggle, the flow, the sense that I made this. When AI steps in too much, that sense of authorship erodes. What's left is polished output, but no inner reward. Wu and colleagues tested this in a series of experiments. People who worked with generative AI produced strong results, but
But when the AI was removed, their motivation collapsed. They described feelings of boredom and disconnection. Other studies echo the pattern. The more AI contributes, the less pride and joy people feel in their own work. The danger isn't just personal. If whole populations start to feel disengaged from their own creativity, societies may lose the fire that drives culture, innovation and even democracy. A civilization that no longer takes joy in thinking and creating is one that risks drifting into passivity. The fifth danger is weakened memory, a quiet erosion of how we remember and own our ideas. Memory isn't just about storage, it's about the act of wrestling with thoughts, shaping them and making them ours. When AI fills in the struggle, we risk losing not only recall, but also authorship. Civilizations depend on continuity of knowledge. If generations stop deeply internalizing what they learn, if they no longer carry their culture, their history, their science within themselves, what remains is a fragile archive, not a living memory. Some research backs this concern. Singh and Paradis found that heavy AI users showed reduced brain activation in regions tied to reasoning and memory. They recalled less from their own writing and even struggled to distinguish their ideas from the AIs. Similarly, Cosmina and colleagues described this as cognitive debt, a gradual weakening of ownership when the machine carries too much of the load. The risk is that we end up with perfectly polished outputs, but no real connection to them. A culture that forgets how to remember is a culture already fading. The sixth danger is the rise of passive learning. Generative AI makes knowledge instant. Answers appear in seconds, but that convenience can seduce us into skipping the very struggle that makes learning stick. Without challenge, attention and persistence wither. Education has always depended on what psychologists call productive struggle, the hard work of grappling with problems until insight emerges. If AI removes that friction, learners risk becoming spectators rather than participants in their own growth. Studies are already showing this drift. Ozturk and Mariani found that students using ChatGPT to complete assignments did the work faster, but retained less knowledge. Many admitted they put in less effort because the AI made things too easy. Similarly, Cheng and colleagues warn that frequent reliance on AI in STEM learning undermines problem-solving skills and persistence. Therefore, the danger isn't simply lazy students. It's a society that normalizes intellectual shortcuts. If entire generations learn to expect knowledge without effort, the result may be shallow citizens in a shallow civilization. NPC Wonderland. In this video, we've looked at just six dangers of generative AI. The erosion of critical thought, the illusion of competence, the flattening of originality, the loss of creative joy, weakened memory, and the drift into passive learning. Each of these is more than a mere personal inconvenience. Taken together, they raise civilizational stakes. Societies don't only collapse simply because their tools break down. They collapse when their people stop thinking, stop remembering, and stop imagining. But this isn't the end of the story. In the next video, I'll share the other side of the coin, the ways generative AI can truly enhance our minds and creativity, if only we use it wisely. Because the future will not just be written by AI, it will be written by the quality of the attention we bring to what we create, and who we become in the process. I'm Marcus T. Anthony. See you again soon in the future. Hello, Marcus T. Anthony here. If you're interested in the kinds of ideas you've encountered here, you'll love my new online Power and Presence course. The course purpose is to enable you to establish your unique, authentic self, what I call your deep self, and to live a life that truly reflects your highest potential, not what somebody else has told you what you should be. Each session has a specially designed meditation to help you embody your deep self. In the Power and Presence online course, you'll learn how to stand in the power of your deep self, how to develop embodied presence, making it impossible for others to distract you from your desired future, how to intuitively set your most important life goals and develop the wise actions to achieve them, how to develop digital wisdom, the unshakable capacity to know yourself deeply and master our minds in the age of AI. Power and Presence course is available right now. Links are in the description. 
See you then.